thank the gentleman for his remarks, and I now recognize the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Rothkin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, um, Representative Comstock, for organizing this tonight. <clears throat> So I just have a quick personal story, Mr. Speaker. Um, Justice Scalia's daughter, Anne, lives in my neighborhood. And I served in the state legislature and learned that this woman whose name, last name obviously was no longer Scalia was the daughter of Justice Scalia. So I called her up and I said, if your dad is ever in town, I'd love to meet him. I was that guy, Mr. Speaker, who made that call. And she was very gracious. Sometime later, she called me up and said, Peter, my dad's coming in, and why don't you and your family stop by? So the Roscombs ran around the corner, my wife Elizabeth and me and our four children, who were young at the time. And we went over, and there we spent a few minutes on a Sunday afternoon with Justice Scalia, very magnanimous, very gracious, there in his blue jeans and his sweatshirt, getting up off the couch, but extending himself to us. A couple of years later, I won a seat in the U.S. House, and I thought, well, I've got a little bit of a connection. I'll reach out, and I'll call, and I'll try and make a courtesy call. And I um, made some contact with his chambers, and they said, well, his staff, and they said, well, would you like to come over and listen to an argument? New member of Congress, I said, I'd love to go over. So over I go and um, listen to an argument in the Supreme Court, and it's very dramatic, as you know. And then I was walking out feeling a little bit let down because I actually wanted to say hello to Justice Scalia. Not to be disappointed, his staff said, well, come on with us. And I go up to, his, up to his office, and there in his chambers, he set out a lunch, and the two of us just had lunch together. Now... It was not lost on me who I was having lunch with. It was not lost on me the magnitude, the scale, the capacity of this man um, and his ability to influence things at a grand scale. And yet he was really willing to spend some time with me that day. And I got to tell you one other quick story. A few years ago, I invited him to dinner. I said, Justice Scalia, I've got a number of my colleagues that would love to have dinner with you. Would you be willing to come out? And of course he did. I told my wife afterward, I said, this guy is so interesting and so charming. If he had a radio show, you would listen to it. You would set your timing so that you could listen to him. He was so interesting, so clever, and so quick, and willing to take all kinds of questions and all kinds of debate and so forth. And I just want to close by saying this. There are many, many times when we feel overwhelmed by events that are before us in our public life. There's many times when our constituents feel overwhelmed and they get this sense of, look, is there anybody out there that's some, got some level of judgment and wisdom and capacity here? Are there any examples and role models? And the answer is Justice Scalia. He's an example. He's an example that we're all the beneficiaries of his clear mind, his capacity to disagree without being disagreeable, his capacity to build people up, his capacity to articulate a worldview, his capacity to be a faithful and vocal follower of his Savior Jesus and not be defensive about it, and basically invite people along to celebrate and to participate in this great gift, which is our democracy. Even in these short interactions that I had with him, you always got the sense, or I did, that he got the joke. In other words, there was a twinkle in his eye. Look, this is a democracy and we've got roles to play. His role on the court was to do his thing. Our role, Mr. Speaker, is to legislate with that same sense of commitment and character and tenacity and clarity that Justice Scalia brought to his role on the judiciary. So I want to honor Justice Scalia. I want to honor his wife, Mrs. Scalia. I want to honor his children and grandchildren and thank them because it's a fat sacrifice for them to have someone of that caliber and that capacity in that role for our country. And it's not a burden that's easy, but they've been willing to bear that burden and our country is better off for it. So, Mr. Speaker, thank you, and I want to thank the gentlelady from Virginia and yield back the balance of my time. I thank the gentleman for those uh, lovely memories.